Hello everybody and welcome to Seatown Vapes. I am Chris as always and you know what? Today is kind of a weird kind of a weird video. So, say you have a Clito, right? You got a Clito, you would like in the Clito. I've been a big fan of the tank. Uh puts out good vapor. No complaints there at all. Good flavor. The problem I had with the Clito after using it for a little while is I found the coils for how much they cost some of them lasted quite a while and then other ones not so much and they would start getting like a weird flavor to them other ones would start out with a weird flavor that would kind of you know go away after a little bit of a break in and then they'd start to get kind of weird again so i'm like well that stinks because i really like my clito but i kind of retired it uh, out of the collection for a little while and then i saw that this thing came along the clito rta section and this i actually saw someone post on Facebook somewhere. I can't remember where. It might have been the Mount Baker Vapor Group, but somebody got one of these things and I thought, hmm, that could be the solution to breathing new life back into my Clito. So uh, I did, uh, I pre-ordered the damn thing and it took forever for it to come. Uh, it came directly from Aspire and I kind of forgot about it actually that so much time went by. But now I've had a month with this and I kind of went all out. So I went from standard Clito to boom, totally tricked out, like completely different looking Clito tank. So I've got a five milliliter extension tank on here and a custom drip tip and the RTA section in here. So I basically completely transformed the Clito tank into something entirely different, uh, just reusing the top piece and then the base section. And that was pretty much the only thing that came along for the ride. So. Let's get to know the Clito RTA section a little bit more up close and personal and check out what you get in the box, what this thing looks like when you take it apart, and then how to assemble something totally different from the original Clito. Well, all right, here's the packaging for the Aspire Clito RTA system. And you can see uh, the packaging is pretty much in line with the uh, aesthetic of Aspire's packaging as we've seen over the years now. And uh, you've got the RTA section right there in a the little window, so you can check that out. And uh, not really a whole lot going on here, just uh, some bullet points on some of the things that uh, you're gonna be able to get. Uh, the big one here is large enough for Clapton coils, and this actually does come pre-installed with Claptons. Mine doesn't have them in it anymore because I switched it out, but when you get this, it will initially have a Clapton build in it just to kind of prove that. You do have your scratch and check area, which always makes me think back on the scratch and sniff stickers from the 90s but anyway uh the back not a whole lot more going on there either so let's just go ahead and pop this open see what you get inside the packaging here we'll take a look at the rta section in a moment but you get uh the aspire cotton so they give you a pretty decent amount in there actually i haven't actually opened this up to see how much is in there but it's it's pretty thick and dense in there so they give you quite a bit and then uh it's o-ring city so uh no shortage of o-rings in this package so um, that's actually really nice because i like having extra o-rings around not just for you know this tank but for others as well sometimes these uh you can use them on other things if you happen to lose an o-ring here or there and then you do have the little allen wrench uh tool there and you know to do your build and then yay extra screws and quite a few of them so that's always good for those velocity style decks which is what is in here so let me put that back together. You also do, it's kind of hidden in the back. You get the um, Clito RTA uh, systems instruction manual. And uh, really it's just kind of, you know, this picture right here is really all you need. It kind of shows the breakdown of what this is going to look like. And uh, it does kind of show that uh, there are Claptons in there. So not, uh, not too much to really see there. Oh, and then it also shows you everything that you get in the box as well. And then you do have that Clapton build again. So set all that off to the side. That's all the boring stuff. Let's pop this guy out. So here is the Clito RTA section. You can see this is a big boy. So if you're gonna use this in the uh, actual tank that the Clito comes with by default, you can see uh, it's gonna be a tight squeeze. You are not gonna get a whole lot of juice uh, in this particular tank once you put the section in there which is why I opted to go with the glass extension. So I'll cover 
this uh, kind of briefly here. There's not really a whole lot to really talk about. This runs anywhere from like eight to 12 or eight to 10 bucks. I've seen it as high as 12, but that's that's too high. Don't pay that. And I've seen it on eBay as low as six bucks, but this is the five milliliter uh, extension. And that's important because you can see then when the RTA section is in there, you do have the you know little bump out to kind of make up for how much room this is taking up because you can see the top part, which is how wide normally the tank would be. There's really not much space there at all. So you definitely want to have the one that bumps out and uh, you know, you're, you're getting a lot of new parts here. So, you know, that, that'll be in my cons. But anyway, looking at this, you take this apart by unscrewing the top section. So that comes off and then you can see you've got your uh, build deck down in there. So we'll set that off to the side. And then once you get that off, you kind of got a grip and then unscrew. And then this piece will come off and boom, your build deck is exposed. And uh, you know, you have quite a bit of room here, actually. I know it may not seem like it, but I've actually put three millimeter builds in here before. Uh, this particular one is two and a half and uh, I've been using it for quite a while. I want to say this is a seven wrap, 24 gauge Nichrome build. If I'm not mistaken, it might be Canthal. I can't remember to be honest with you but I've been really happy with this particular build. I found that the Clapton build that came in here by default was a little bit spitty. So I switched to my usual spaced coil builds that uh, you know I like so much. And uh, I found this one just to be fantastic. Uh, it's easy to fit in here. You've got plenty of clearance all around. It's really easy to wick, which I'll show momentarily. And it's just giving me fantastic flavor and fantastic vapor production. So. Uh, this particular seven wrap space build's just really been, uh, it's really been a champ for me. So yeah, that's pretty much that. So when everything's put together, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like up close. If I can figure out how to screw that back on. Struggling there a little bit. Okay, so again, there is the Clito section just by itself. And then you're gonna take your Clito base that you already have from your Clito tank. And then you're just going to screw this on in there. So now you've got something looking kind of like this. So you can see at this point, we pretty much completely changed this tank because by the time you pop on that thick glass, there's not a whole lot left of this. That was the original Clito. I mean, really, you've just got the base section with the 510. And I even went so far as to switch out the drip tip. I do not remember where I got this. It was on an eBay auction. I'll put the details for this drip tip down in the description. Uh, it's really fantastic though. It, uh, it fits right over where you normally have that um, kind of proprietary drip tip that came with the uh, Clito tank. And this just slides right over that. And look at that. That's just really nice. So between the drip tip, the tank extension, and the RTA, you pretty much end up creating a whole new beast, a whole new tank in itself, um, using just very few parts actually from the original tank. So that's, that's kind of one of the cons. And like I said, I'll get to that when we get out to vaping this. But first, we've got to get a build in here. So uh, the build's already there, but I gotta wick that thing. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so I've got this on my uh, Relo RX 200. You know how I like my Relos. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get out my little tweezies here and a little bit of cotton that I've already pre-cut. And I'm just gonna do my usual peel off layer feed it through that whole thing. You know how it goes if you've seen my other videos. So I'm going to peel off layer cotton. And then what I like to do on RTA sections that are fairly small like this one is I can just get one strip of cotton and then twist both ends and then just cut it in half. And that saves me a little bit of a waste. And then I can just feed that through and do my trimming. So I will do that now. Feed it, pull it, a little back and forth action. All right, I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, then I just like to fluff up the uh, ends that I curled up just a little bit, get them kind of coming back to life a little. And then at this point, you kind of just wanna eyeball it. So what you're gonna wanna be doing is getting it down into this little juice well here. You know, nothing, uh, nothing too earth shattering there. Uh, much like a lot of other uh, RTA systems out there. And I found this one's very forgiving as far as how much you can actually put in there. So I just like to kind of make a, a mark on there. And I found by doing this in the past that that mark 
kind of lines up with the base, the sidewall down here, this area. It lines up very well with that. So I just like to kind of go from there and then draw straight up and cut. And that gets me just about where I should be as far as length goes. So then I repeat the same thing on the other side, kind of line it up and then just come straight up and cut from there. Then what I like to do is just make sure that everything's straight. So I kind of take a look at it and just line everything up and maybe if I have a little bit of excess, I will cut that off. So get everything a little straightened out there and then kind of come up and just take off a little bit on each one of the corner sections here. So this really is not an exact science. This is very forgiving as far as actually uh, a little bit more there. Just from having done this a few times, I've kind of got it down. So that's, you know, it, like I said, doesn't have to be perfect because the beauty of this is, look at me, I'm making a mess already. Now all you gotta do is just stuff it down in there. And this isn't one of those tanks where it's really, you know, super, super finicky about how it's gonna feed. If, you know, some RTAs, if you have too much cotton packed into the juice channel, uh, they just do not wick. They will not wick for you. This one, I have not found that to be an issue at all whatsoever. So you can, uh, you know, as long as you don't go completely nuts and just, com you know, if you're, see how easy that's going in there? It's just going in really soft and easy. It's real fluffy at the bottom. You know, nothing's fighting me. I'm not having to put any pressure to get this in here. As long as that's the situation you're in, you're fine. If you're really forcing the cotton in there and you're having to like really fight it to, to get it to go down in there, then yeah, you are probably putting too much cotton. But look at that, it just it just goes right in there. It just wants to go in there. It lays right in, so just make sure that's in there like that. And the other side, I mean, this is so, so easy to wick. It really, really is. It's just, uh, it's, it's really a joy to work with this. So get this last piece stuffed in there. Got one that's being a straggler, all right. Then I like to just kind of go along and make sure I don't have anything in front of the uh, airflow areas kind of down here you can see that i like to get the cotton kind of out of the way of that make sure there's a, a clear channel for the air to get to my coils and then i just kind of tuck any any cotton that's kind of poking out on the side channels uh, i like to tuck that kind of back in make sure it's not going to snag on anything when we put this back together and everything looks pretty pretty darn good fluff that one out a little bit so then you can see that the channels, uh, they are full, but they're not like packed. And I, that's the big difference here. If your cotton fills the channel, that's great. If your cotton is slammed into the, the juice flow channel, that's not good. So make sure that you're not overdoing it. All right, just put a little juice over the top there. All right, that juice is settling in there nicely. So I already know I have this one set. This is a uh, point 27 ohm resistance build so I am at 68 watts with 68 watts which gives me 4.28 volts so many numbers there uh, and I'm going to do a quick test fire and boom lots and lots of vapor so well I'm already making a mess with my juice maybe I can use my excess cotton to wipe some of that up look at that multitasking all right so now that we've got a successful test fire all that's left to do is take this cap and screw it on and I find that you don't need to really force these things on here as soon as you get any resistance. Uh, stop screwing it down, otherwise you're gonna make a pretty lousy experience for yourself when you go to take this thing apart again. The O-rings are uh, nice and thick and they will do their job. So you do not need to over tighten anything on this and make things hard on yourself later when you go to take it apart. So now that that is done, just take the bulbous tank and stick that on there and uh, now just Put some juice in. Now, one thing that you may be wondering at this point is, hey, there's no juice flow control on this. So isn't this thing gonna leak like crazy when you go to fill it? No, it does not. As long as you close off the airflow, I have found I've never had this leak on me and I've been using this for over a month now. I actually pre-ordered this directly from Aspire. I was so excited for it after seeing some people post about it early, early on, um, but you can get it a lot of places now, so that's not an issue. But I've been using this for quite a while and I have not had any issues with any kind of leaking during the filling process. So 
no worries there. You don't have to worry about a juice flow control, but do make sure that you shut off the airflow. That does help keep things from flooding into the coil. All right, that's full, pretty good. Just take the last piece and screw that onto the top. And there you go, there's the finished product, the uh, Aspire Cleto with the RTA section and uh, custom drip tip on there as well. So now it's time to uh, head back out and vape on this bad boy. Well, all right, so there you have it, the Cleto RTA section, totally changing the entire look of the tank and uh, just kind of breathing new life into something that uh, was kind of growing old. So the big question here, how does it vape? Well, let's find out. Ooh, man, I tell you what, not only do you get a lot of vapor out of that bad boy, but it tastes great. Now, some of that may be I'm getting a little bit of spit back. You know, that can happen when you have coils that are really close to the drip tip. Sometimes you get the illusion that flavor is better than it actually is because a little bit is getting back into your mouth. Though I will say, the Clapton coils that came with this were spitting back quite a bit to the point where I could actually tell I was like, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of spit in my mouth. I can taste too much of the juice, and then you actually can realize it's happening. So I switched out the build to the one that you saw in the up close, and uh, now I'm just really, really, really enjoying the vape that I'm getting from this. Like I said, uh, two and a half millimeter, seven wrap, 24 gauge spaced build. Uh, it's either nichrome or canthal. I don't remember, I'm sorry. But it comes out to uh, 0.27 ohms. Like I said, I'm running it at 68 watts, getting about 4.26 volts. When I say about, that was pretty precise. But it is the RX200, so who knows? Could be a little bit off. But we're you know at that 4.2 volt range, which I like vaping around that range for most non-Clapton builds. With the Claptons, I find I have to push a little more power to them. So this is great because I can get tremendous battery life off of my reload device using this tank with it. And um, you actually do get a pretty good amount of juice capacity from this thing when you actually put the extension on here. I would say two and a half to maybe three milliliters is getting in here. Uh, I thought when I did this the first time that I was gonna be filling this back up like immediately. And it lasts longer than you think. It looks are deceiving. The funny thing is, is when you put the juice in here, it actually uh, acts as like a magnifying glass and it makes the RTA section just look ginormous in the tank. And then as you start to vape and the juice goes down, you're like, oh yeah, it's not taking up nearly as much room as it looks like it is. So yeah, there's not really a whole lot else to say. Now, pros and cons. Pros, flavor is absolutely amazing. Building on this thing is super simple because it's a velocity style deck. Pretty much any time you're dealing with a velocity style deck, building on it's gonna be fairly easy. Uh, and wicking this is just absolutely a joy. It's so easy to do. Like I said, you just line up with the base, come up, snip, and then snip off you know, a little bit on each corner and you're good to go. And just like I said, when you're when you're wicking it, make sure that you're not like forcing the wick into the juice flow channels. But other than that, uh, it continues to wick just really, really well, um, even with a lot of cotton down in there. And I'm, I'm gonna chain vape this and see how long I can go uh, before I actually get any kind of a dry hit on it. Okay, I'm done, uncle, I, I call it. Um, that's probably what, seven-ish hits? I wasn't really keeping track, but um, yeah, kind of starting to feel it. Little, little getting a little lightheaded, so uh, even with the three uh, milligram Nick juice, it's just, uh, it was gonna be a little too much. That never even got remotely dry. Um, and I hit those back to back to back to back. Seven pretty, f you know, decent full pulls on that. No problems whatsoever with this keeping up. So that's another pro. It wicks, not only is it easy to wick, but it wicks like a champ. Um, 
Aesthetically, you may like it, you may not. Uh, the extension tank does make this kind of an odd shape. If you liked the clean look of the original Cleto, this does break that a little bit. Uh, the drip tip that I added to it, I think is a nice little addition and it just feels good. Airflow is uh, really, really good. Nice and smooth, uh, nice and swooshy, which is how I like it. And uh, like I said, the flavor is just fantastic with the particular build that I put in here. You have lots of room. I've put three millimeter uh, coils in here before and not had an issue with it. So uh, if you use two and a half, uh, you can easily get Clapton in, in here as well. So that that's really nice. You have a lot of flexibility with this. Now, cons. Uh, the biggest con is the fact that you have to basically replace your Cleto. So if you don't already own a Cleto, there's really no reason to do this. You can go out and get like a Heracles version 2 or uh, a Griffin or a Gemini or, you know, uh, it's, it's a smock FTA, RFTA, what, what RDTA, and then they've got they've got the RDTA and the, the RTA, and they've got a whole bunch of, everybody's got something out there now that's probably going to come in less because you're going to have to buy the Cleto, then you're going to have to buy the five milliliter tank, then you're going to have to buy the RTA section, and then if you want to go completely wild, you can get a drip tip, but that's totally optional. And you could use the drip tip even if you didn't go with all this madness. But anyway, pricing. I was uh, wrong in the up close. When I initially got the uh, five milliliter tank, prices were running a little bit higher, but they have thankfully come down. So it looks like, um, you know, Vape uh, NW has it for as low as like 325. I'm um, seeing it here, um, Hoosier e Sig right here in town, uh, 449. Uh, looks like another place has got it for four, 325 at Sweet Vape. So. Anywhere between three and four bucks, so that's not a, you know too bad. And then um, looking at the actual RTA, uh, my vapor store's got it for twelve ninety five. Vape and W's got it for thirteen ninety nine, and Vapor DNA's got it for fourteen ninety nine. So you know anywhere between thirteen and fifteen bucks. So you're kind of coming up on that twenty dollar range to kind of do this whole little setup on top of the price of the Cleto. So like I said, by the time you factor that in. Plus, you know, every you know, having to buy the Cleto and all that, you're you're north of what you're probably gonna pay to just get an entire tank, you know, brand new. But if you really, really um, like the Cleto and uh, you already have the Cleto, then I highly suggest making this little. I, it's like a modification. Mod your Cleto. And I, I will say though, the flavor from this is so so good that I'm almost tempted to recommend actually going out and doing the whole Cleto tank RTA section just on that alone. But you know, if, if you're on a budget, then this probably isn't the best route to go. But if you already have a Cleto, I highly recommend doing this. So like I said, pricing, uh, it has come down uh, quite a bit just in the last couple of months that I've been using it since I initially did my pre-order. So that's always a good thing. Uh, that's the nature of the beast in the vaping world. So with all of that, um, I'm rambling. I'm going to hit this one more time, though. Mm. That's nice. That pomegranate juice is really good, too, from uh, Mount Pocono. I hadn't tried that yet, so glad that worked out since I filled the entire tank with it. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Go ahead and follow me on social media. I am on Instagram and Twitter as Seatown Vapes. And then if you have a question that you don't feel like leaving in the comments or you don't have enough room on Twitter, then you can go ahead and email me at seatownvapes at gmail.com. Now, you know what's coming next. If you've been watching any of my videos. It's time for my, you know, public service announcement. The vaping industry is under attack by the FDA. So we need to make sure that we're doing our part to fight for our right to vape. So to do that, I'm going to have links, as I do in all of my videos now, below. So go ahead and look at those. They're important. Uh, the one you want to pay the most attention to is the CASA.org call to action. Head over to CASA.org, sign up um, so that you get notifications not only for what's going on on a federal level, but also a state level. And make sure that you're reaching out to your representatives. They make it super easy on CASA. Uh, they have basically a canned letter. You can go in there, you can change it and tweak it so that it works for you. And then it sends it out to your particular representatives and, and, and you know people in Washington that need to see it. So please do that. Uh, there is HR 2058 and the Cole Bishop Amendment both happening at the same time right now, trying to move the predicate date so that it is not February 2007, it moves it up to August of this year. So 
follow the link that's up on the screen, follow the links down below, and you'll end up at that CASA link. So please do that and uh, just, you know, do your part. It is an election year. You vape, you vote, make sure that your voice is heard because we want to make sure that even something as simple as the Clito is still around for all of us who have already quit smoking and used vaping as a means of harm reduction. And there are still millions of smokers out there that have yet to convert. And we want to make sure that this is still around for them so that we can get them switched over as well and welcome them into the world of harm reduction and hopefully in the long run, save hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives with this great new uh, technology, really. You know, you, you think about vaping technology, it's a lot like computer technology. It just moves so fast, <laughs> it's hard to keep up with it. And we don't wanna stifle that. And that's the important thing, because if we don't change that predicate date, we're gonna have to go back in time to 2007, and anything made after then is gonna have to go through a lengthy PMTA process that's gonna cost you know north of a million dollars and very time consuming, it's just bad news. It'll basically kill off over 99% of the vapor industry. It'll end the vape industry as we know it now in the United States. So do your part. That is the end of my public service announcement. So you know the drill, don't be a stranger. Check back soon and vape on.